So in this video, I want to show you, teach you a little bit about probability. This is not really going to be about um, biology, actually. It's going to be a little bit of math. So we're actually going to teach you a little bit of the math that you need in order to do these problems, which are going to be genetics problems. Now, what probability is, is the chance of something happening. We already talked about this briefly in a previous video, that, for example, the chances of you getting either heads or a tails is one half when you throw a die because there's two possibilities and the outcome that you expect is one, right? So that means there's one half chance of getting either heads or tails. What about throwing a die? When you throw a die, the chance of throwing each die would be one out of six to get a certain side of the die, right? So that's kind of how that, that works. Now, what is the chance of getting a specific card on a deck of cards? There's 52 cards in a deck of cards. So getting a specific card, there's 52 possibilities. To get one specific card, your chances is one out of 52. And we saw how to use these things on Punnett squares. For example, what are the chances on this F1 cross over here that we have of getting an actual um, uh, recessive genotype uh, that's homozygous? Well, it's one out of the four possibilities, so you get a one-fourth chance. So we used this when we did uh, our crosses. We figured out the percentages of the chances of having a certain thing. But it, this can be used in biology in a lot of different ways. For example, amino acids in a protein, there are 20... Uh, amino acids that can conform, can possibly be a part of this protein. So for each position in the protein, the chances of that being the right amino acid is 20 out of 20. It's 1 out of 20. So these are all probabilities that will show up. So the, and then we've used this before. Now this is basic probability. Now the things I want to teach you right now which are actually going to help you is the two laws of probability that govern uh, the use of basic probability, the law of multiplication and the law of addition. Now, the law of multiplication is basically what you see here on the screen. What are the chances of two things happening together? Now, you see this big circle represents the chance of event A taking place. This chance here represents the chance of event B taking place. What are the chances of two events happening together at the same time that is what you use the law of multiplication for if the events are independent from each other. Now, let's see what that means. The first time you toss a, a coin, so you get a coin, you go toss the coin. When you catch it and you say heads or tails, the chance of getting either is one out of two. So you have a one in two chances of getting either heads or tails. What are the chances of getting heads again? So getting the heads first and on the second time. Whatever happened on the first time has no bearing on what will happen the second time. So the second event is independent from the first event. It has nothing to do with it. So if you want to do that, you multiply the chances of the first event happening with the chances of the second event happening. So since the second event is still one half, the chance of that happening sequentially is going to be one out of four. And so that is how you cover that. Now remember when we... Uh, uh, when we talked about the probability of independent assortment for 23 chromosomes always being one half, that's right. It's the same thing as this. And remember we talked about 23 chromosomes being uh, sorted like that. And I said the chances of that happening, uh, all the dead, all your chromosomes of one gamete being dad's chromosomes and all the chromosomes and mom's chromosomes uh, on one, the other gamete being your mom's chromosomes, I said that those chances were dismal. Here's why. For each assortment, the chance is one half, and it's going to end up in a gamete. But you have to do that times itself, keep, and you have to keep doing that 23 times. So if you do this, it's the same thing as doing one half to the power of 23. That is an incredibly small number, so small that it's almost zero. In fact, that number is... 0 0.0, uh, let me see, that's six zeros, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 9. That is the chance of that happening. That is like 1.19 times 10 
to the negative, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in scientific notation. It is ridiculously small. Let's see. Again, I'm going to make sure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I thought I made a mistake. It is a small, small number. So it's not going to happen. That is why independent of assortment guarantees variation because there's no way you're going to give just half of your chrome or some that came from your dad to your child. Now, let's keep doing another example of that. Now that you did this, I'm going to say your problem. You can pause the video and see if you can figure out the probability now that you know how to do this. All right? I want to know what are the chances of getting... Um, on the, you take a card out of the deck and... Uh, and you're going to get, well, oh, actually, let's not do that then. Let's do the die first. What are the chances of getting, rolling a die and getting a six and then rolling the die again? Um, oh, sorry, rolling a second die at the same time and also getting a six. So what are the chances of that happening? Pause it and calculate it. So if you did that right, you should have known that the chances of getting a 6 is always 1 out of 6, because there's 6 sides in the die. And since what happens to one die has nothing to do with what happens to the other, you have to multiply the chances. And so this will be 1 out of 36 possible scenarios. So if you were to actually count the different possibilities, the possibility in this case will be out of 1 out of 30, 36. If you were to count each of those events, you would find that only one satisfies what you wanted. Now let's do a little, a little, this little same thing with that protein over there. What are the chances of this protein that has 20 amino acids optional options and it has 63 different chromosome, different different amino acids? What are the chances of that protein being made by chance without any help? Uh, that would be for every time it would be one out of 20, right? But since you're going to do this 64 times, you have to raise that to the 64th power. Now, if you actually calculate that, that is an incredibly, incredibly small number that is approximately zero, which is why proteins, it's very hard for a protein to form by itself. You need a little bit of help, which is why DNA is usually involved in the formation of proteins. Now, let's do another one a little more tricky. What are the chances of getting um, a ace of hearts? Or, or queen of hearts, sorry. So you want to get the queen of hearts the first time you take a card. And then you don't put her back. You don't put her back. And then you take another card. And this time you get the ace of spades. Alright? What are the chances of that happening? Okay, if you did that right, you should have known that the chances of that happening would be 1 out of 52 cards. Because it's 52 cards in a deck that you would get the queen of hearts. The second event is unrelated to the first event, but this time you don't have 52 cards anymore because you took one out. So you only have, that's a trick right there, you only have 51 cards. So the chances would be 1 out of 52 times 1 out of 51, whatever that is. So you get a calculator, you can do that and find your results. So that is the law of multiplication. And in the next video, I'm going to teach you how to use that law to actually apply it for genetic problems. Okay, now another one that I wanted to show you is the law of addition. How do you do the law of addition? Now, the law of addition is for mutually exclusive events. In other words, uh, is when A has to be separate from B. So, like, instead of this graph looking like that, it will be, it's like the A and then B. So, what are the chances of either A or B happening? So, the key term for law of addition was and, the multiplication was and you see and you think multiplication okay the the key thing for the law of addition is the word or you see the word or you think addition okay um so multiplication and or if the problem says or you're going to go with addition so let's do let's do that so what are the chances of getting either heads or tails that seems like a stupid question. There's only two possibilities, right? So what are the chances of getting heads? The chance of getting heads is one half. But the chance of getting tails is also one half. But this time, you're using or. So these are mutually exclusive events or events that can't happen uh, at the same time. Do you understand? It's impossible to get heads or tails at the same time. So that means that they have to be disconnected from each other. It would be impossible for them to happen at the same time. And so they're disconnected. So 1 plus 
half plus one half equals one. So the chances of getting one or the other are always one. You're always going to get one or the other, unless, of course, the coin lands right on its side and stands there. I guess there is a chance of that, but it's very little, little. Now, let's do that with the die. What are the chances of getting, uh, throwing the die and getting all, uh, and getting an even number? So let's think about that. What are the possibilities for that? Uh, I can get, there's one in a six chance that I will get a two. There's also a one in a six chance that I can get a four. And there's also one in a six chance that I will get a six. Now, each of those events cannot happen at the same time, which is why they're mutually exclusive. But when you add those chances, you get three out of six or one half, as it should be. So you see how you use the law of addition. Let's do that with the cost if you know how to figure this out. What are the chances, all right, that um, I will get, uh, I'll get this card here and I will get in sequence, all right? So I will get uh, I, uh, or, um, or a club. So either a heart or a club. So that means I want to get either one of these or those. Now, obviously, the chances of each one of those cards is 1 out of 52. So I would have to do a law of addition for all of those things. And since I'm losing a half the deck, you already should know that the chance is half. All right? So get either one or the other. But how would you do that with the law of addition? You have to do this 13 times for the clubs. So that would be that times 13. So you get 13 out of 52. But you also have to add to that the 13 hearts out of 52 possibilities and so you would get 26 out of 52 which is actually one half chance of that happening so let me do another one what are the chances of getting uh, a three or a four out of the deck so that would be uh, um, one out of 52 because oh not not really you have three four threes in a deck so that's going to be four things out of 52 plus the four so it'll be four more because you have four fours out of 52 so that chance will be eight out of 52 which you can simplify further into four out of 26 or two out of 13 and that would be my chances of getting that happen and you'll see how you use the rules of probability now you can use the rules of probability together for example what are the chances that you're going to get you are going to roll a die and you're going to get an even number, you're going to roll two dice and get an even number in one and an odd number on the other. So how would you do that one? Pause it, think about it. Okay, so that, let's look at the first event. What are the chances of getting even numbers? We talked about that. Uh, those are mutually exclusive events. It was three out of six or one half, right? So to get a, the chance of getting even numbers and then die was one half. But you also have and at the same time, you have to get this, uh, the odds on the other one, which is also one half. So you have to multiply those chances together because you have an and there and you would get a one in a, in a four chance of that happening. That's pretty good chances. That could happen. That happens very often. One out of four times. Now, what are the chances of getting snake eyes? Snake eyes, which is bad if, you, if you're paying crabs, right? So let's see that. Well, for the first die, the chance is going to be one, uh, oh, sorry, I have to make an or. What are the chances of getting either snake eyes, all right, um, or, or getting um, a pairs of sixes, right? So how would you do that? The chances of getting snake eyes would be one out of six for the first one, times one out of six for the first one, because it's an N, so it's one out of 36, right the chance of getting the, the the six is also the same thing but you have a word or which means you have to add them so it's a two out of 36 which is a one out of 18 chance of that happening so that won't happen very often all right and those is that's how you do the laws of probability and in the next video i'm going to show you how to use them for genetics